Hi, I'm Dmitry, and in this video I want to talk about the current state of themes and plugins on WordPress.org. To keep this data more relevant and actionable, I have excluded the themes and plugins that haven't been updated in 5 years. The cutaway date is 1st of September 2015. So this research is based on 5600 themes and 48900 plugins. If you're watching this video, you're probably involved with WordPress or web development in some way. In that case, maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this one. You can find the data used in this video in the video's description below. Let's go! Here are some quick stats from this research. The ratio of plugins to themes is 7 to 1. The total number of active plugin installations to theme installations is 20 to 1. Now let's start by looking first at the data for themes. Looking at the top 20 largest themes, we can see that 5 of them have a high number of active installations. For some of them, an important part of the total size comes from language and translation files. But some themes have a large screenshot.png file. For example, the Flox theme, their screenshot.png file is 1.5 MB. It takes 10 seconds to reduce it to 380 kilobytes, a 75% reduction. That's an instant decrease by almost 10% of a full theme package. At 40,000 active installations, that's 43 gigabytes of disk space saved in 10 seconds of effort. Another metric in my research is the total number of files and folders in themes and plugins. If you have tens of thousands of files on a server, even if they are very small in size, that still negatively affects the performance of a server. You also have to consider the maintenance of all these files. As a theme user, would you be comfortable knowing that there are 500 JavaScript files that the theme needs for one thing or another? Are all those files safe? Are all those files updated when they need to? And wait till I get to this data metric for plugins. The number of files that some plugins have is incredible. But how does this affect WordPress users? As an example, let's look at one of my GoGeek hosting accounts at SiteGround. My full account is limited to 450,000 inodes. Let's take a quick look and see what an inode is. With just a few WordPress websites hosted in this account, I'm already at 280,000 inodes. Other hosting providers have a lower limit. A couple of themes here and there, some necessary plugins, and you are already close to the limit. But even if you don't run the risk of reaching the limit, why be wasteful? Why make things more difficult for yourself and the hosting provider? If we all use too much, then performance will likely decrease and prices will increase. Who wants that? Now let's look at the list of the most used themes that are available on WordPress.org. Astra is the only non-default theme to have reached a million active installations. It went live on WordPress at the end of May 2017. What an accomplishment in just 3 years time. If we exclude the 10 default themes from the ranking, that is the 2020, 2017 and so on, when there are only 9 themes that have reached 100,000 active installations and only 19 themes that have reached 50,000. If your theme has over 20,000 active installations, then you can claim that it's in the top 50 most used themes on WordPress.org. Now let's talk about ratings, which are basically user reviews. Astra and Ocean WP are leaders by far, both in active installations and in the number of ratings. Judging by the ratio of ratings to active installations, it looks like Bloxy has a very bright future ahead of it. And now for the worst rated themes. I decided to exclude the themes that had less than 10 ratings, as I didn't want one or two bad reviews to get a theme on this list. Two of these 12 themes are no longer being updated. It is interesting to see 2019 on this list, even though 3.5 stars out of 5 is not that bad. The total number of ratings for all themes is close to 40,000, and 93% of them are positive. The ratings of Astra and Ocean WP themes combined represent close to 22% of all theme ratings on WordPress.org. Now let's look at some of the most active theme developers and their stats. 
we can clearly see that success does not depend on the number of themes. Maybe some developers should slow down a little bit and rethink their strategy. And finally, let's look at the file breakdown in themes. It is interesting to see that free image file extensions take up 49% of total theme disk size and font files take 15%, while PHP is less than 8%. Now let's look at plugins and how they are doing. The total number of active installations is 246 million, that is 20 times bigger than for themes. There are 4 plugins that are bigger than 100 MB, even though only one of them has a large number of active installations. 19 of these plugins are bigger than vanilla WordPress. As for the number of files, just look at these numbers. There are 86 free plugins that have more files than WordPress itself. The simple calendar plugin needs 13,500 files. At 80,000 active installations, that is over a billion of inodes. Even though not on this list, the WooCommerce plugin has 2,988 files and over 5 million active installations. That is almost 15 billion files. And here's the ranking by number of folders. Are all these really necessary? I don't know. Now let's look at active installations. There are 7 plugins with over 5 million websites. The next breakpoint is probably 10 million, so the difference between these plugins could be a few million. There are 400 plugins that are active on more than 100,000 websites, and 706 plugins active on more than 50,000 websites, compared to the 19 WordPress themes with the same amount. Now let's look at plugin ratings. 45% of plugins have never been rated, even though in total they have over 2.3 million active installations. Yoast SEO is the absolute leader, with more than 20,000 ratings separating them from the second place. Now let's look at the plugins with a worst average rating score and a minimum of 25 ratings. I think this data is very valuable for market research. At the top we can find the Gutenberg plugin, which is not a surprise. The WooCommerce Services plugin by Automatic maybe should get more attention, there seems to be some issues. This Google Analytics plugin got most of its negative reviews after being acquired by Monster Insights LLC, the company behind WP Forms and Optin Monster. Looks like many existing features were removed from the free version of a plugin in favor of its paid version. That made a lot of users angry. And of course, the standard WordPress importer, with 133 negative reviews and an average score of 3 out of 5 stars. I think an upgrade is long overdue. Now the breakdown of plugin ratings. There are 544,000 plugin ratings in total. 89% of these ratings are positive, compared to the 93% of positive theme ratings. Now let's look at the activity in the WordPress.org support forums for plugins. There were almost 53,000 new support threads just in the last two months, that is over 880 per day. More than 8% of all new support threads are for WooCommerce and WooCommerce-related plugins. Considering that many of these plugins have premium upgrades, it would be interesting to know what percentage of these threads are about premium features. The Ultimate member and the WCFM plugins have an unusually high ratio of support threads to their active installations. Now let's highlight the most active plugin developers and contributors. It is difficult to draw any conclusions from this list, as some plugins are very simple integration modules between two plugins or platforms. Nonetheless, I thought I would share this list too. Those of you that are in marketing or are brainstorming ideas for a new WordPress plugin, here's a list of the 100 most used words in plugin names. I've excluded 20 words like for, from, plugin, WordPress, and, and so on. And finally, the last piece of information. It is the breakdown of plugins disk size by file extensions. 
images make up only 22% compared to the 49% in themes. PHP files are also 22% compared to less than 8 in themes. So what are some of my personal conclusions? I am glad that there are significantly more positive ratings than negative ratings. All the numbers for plugins are much larger than for themes, so it's no surprise that the plugins team gets more tools and resources than the themes team. So if you're thinking of building something for WordPress, I think it's a much safer bet to look at plugins instead of themes. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel. If you didn't enjoy it, then leave a dislike. My name is Dmitry, have a wonderful day.